the title of it is Shaking Snakes. And uh, I was going to bring a snake, but they didn't have any at Walmart. So, <laughs> so I got this one in a cage. No, just kidding. But Paul, Apostle Paul, had been through a lot of perils. There's a lot of stories in the Bible about different things. He was arrested. He was imprisoned. He was beaten, stoned, left for dead, shipwrecked out in the open sea. This wasn't the only shipwreck in this in, in Acts, uh, in Acts uh, chapter 28 that they would ever been in, but it's the one we know the most about. And the reason for that journey... Um, was so that Paul would appear before Caesar. He appealed to Caesar. Since he was a Roman citizen, he was able to do that. But Paul would never leave Rome alive. He would eventually be being executed during the reign and the persecution at the time of Nero. So some of them were able to swim to the shore. Those unable to swim made it by hanging on to pieces of the ship, planks. The ship all was all broken up. I preached a sermon one time called Get Out of the Boat. I preached about that. You have to get out of the boat. They, just, they couldn't stay in the boat because it broke up. They would have drowned. But none of them were lost. They had been in a furious storm for 14 days. Can you imagine? 14 days. They threw, the, they threw the cargo out, they threw the food out, they threw everything out. And they were tired, hungry, cold, wet, and exhausted, but still alive. If you want to read along with this story, it starts in verse number 1 of Acts chapter 28. Once safely on shore, we found that the island was called Malta. The islanders showed us unusual kindness. They built a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold. So they were probably trembling, teeth chattering, turning blue. They needed fire. They needed food. They needed warmth. They needed shelter. The kindness of strangers was needed to survive. <laughs> Could you turn off the lights for a minute so we can get a clear view of this picture that's going up here? Okay, see that guy right there? Paul gathered a pile of brushwood, and as he put it on the fire, a viper driven by the heat fastened itself on his hand. So, I did a little bit of research about this particular snake, and there's only one snake on the island of Malta that can give you a poisonous reaction, and uh, that's the snake right there. It's called a cat snake nowadays, and nasty look looking little bugger, isn't he? <laughs> I was going to bring a rubber snake, you know, but, I, but Walmart was all out of them. I thought that'd be fun. But ministry isn't always about preaching. Um, a minister's heart is a servant's heart. And Paul was ministering by helping with the firewood. When the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to each other, this man must be a murderer. For though he escaped from the sea, the goddess justice has not allowed him to live. The people of the island no doubt knew this type of snake because it's kind of lived on there. Today there's four kinds of snakes on Malta. This is the only one that has any kind of venom. But they knew, uh, they knew what it was and they knew that it was poisonous and they expected Paul to shake out, to swell up and die. But Paul shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. That's why I'm calling it shaking snakes. This particular snake, it doesn't have fangs in the front of its mouth like a rattlesnake or like a, I guess, a copperhead, those kind of snakes that we know. Its poison comes from teeth in the back. I never knew this before I did a little bit of research on this here. So they, they clamp down on their prey 
they do a little bit of constricting and they chew down on it with their back teeth and that's where the po that's where the poison comes so he had to shake it off because it was fastened to his hand that's the way those snakes operate right there so people have a natural aversion to snakes just seeing one crawling through the grass gives you the creeps is there anybody here that just can warm up to a snake <laughs> not really they're creepy things they're creepy we used to be allowed to kill rattlesnakes in Pennsylvania I killed a couple of them while fly fishing Scotty almost got in trouble over a dead rattlesnake <laughs> at the boot camp it was good that was pretty near a lot of trouble wasn't it yeah. expensive trouble right and did you and you didn't kill that snake did you yeah I killed it <laughs> did you kill it <laughs> Well, anyway, now you're not allowed to kill. You can kill one. You have to have a permit and a fishing license. But uh, they say you can eat them. I don't know what they taste like, and I don't think I'm going to find out anytime soon. Any kind of wild stuff like that, people say, well, it tastes like chicken. Well, maybe chicken tastes like a rattlesnake. I don't think it would taste like chicken. I really don't. Anyway, in Genesis chapter 3, 14 and 15, it says, So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl in your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. So that could be the first reference we have to the Messiah. You know, I was interested really to find out that there have only been ever two skeletal remains found in, with evidence on the skeleton of crucifixion, of Roman crucifixion. And crucifixion goes all the way back to the Sumerians, but the Romans kind of fine-tuned it. And uh, one of those was in Jerusalem in an ossuary. You may have read about this. And the other one was in, in Italy. Both of them had holes in the heel. The nail fastening them to the cross went through sideways through the heel. And it went through two different directions. So, in other words, the two feet were parallel. And the nail, nail went through both heels and into the cross. Can you imagine that? But they have the, they have the heel and it has the, bone, the, the iron spike still in it. But the one in Jerusalem, yeah, the one in Jerusalem still had the nail in place. There's pictures of it. You can go online and see this. You will strike his heel. So whether or not the heel strike is a specific prediction to the exact manner of Christ's death on the cross, that is the heel strike in that verse seems to point to the cross. Whether it means his heel was nailed to the cross it doesn't matter he'll strike his heel and that sort of leads us to the cross he will crush your head satan will be completely destroyed at the end satan all demons and all people who do not know god will be destroyed amen So Paul shook what would be the instrument of his, devi of his demise off of himself into the fire. The serpent was destroyed, never to bite anyone again. Burned up, gone. So we all have pathways in life. Some are on a path that leads towards God. Some are on a path that leads toward perdition. That's a fancy word that means hell. We all started on that path. The path 
leads to a crossroads where you come to the cross and you decide if you're going to, in Matthew 7, 13, enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that you're already on, in other words, that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. That's the tragedy, that only a few find the path that we're on, the path towards eternal life. When we get onto the path that leads to eternal life, there are obstacles. There are steep inclines on that path. There are boulders. There's rough ground. We are promised a casting down. Did you know that? We're promised to be cast down. We're promised in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it says, we are troubled on every side, yet not, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, there it is, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. The Christian life isn't all peachy. <laughs> it's not. There's opposition. The enemy doesn't want any of us to succeed. He tries to stop us. He hates us because we're the children of God and he hates God. He was constantly trying to stop Paul. Paul was extremely successful in carrying the gospel all through what they called Asia Minor, which is Turkey and part of Albania probably. The snake wasn't the only threat in his life. Casting off the serpent, shaking off the snake had an effect on the island's inhabitants. In Acts 28, 7 to 10, there was an estate nearby that belonged to Publius, the chief official of the island. That must have been like a Roman governor. He welcomed us to his home and showed us gener generous hospitality for three days. His father was sick in bed, suffering from a fever and dysentery. Paul went in to see him and after prayer, placed his hands on him and healed him. When this happened, the rest of the sick on the island came and were cured. They honored us in many ways that when he says is us, uh, so this is probably Luke that's writing this because Luke was with him. They offered us, they honored us in many ways and when we were ready to sail, they furnished us with the supplies that we needed. Do you think any of this ministry Paul would have been able to do on that island if he hadn't have been bitten by a snake and then shaked it off? Shook it off? Do you think that Paul, as a result of the healing power of God, would have led people to the Lord in repentance? It doesn't say, but if he worked miracles there, I'm sure the Apostle Paul preached the gospel there, and I'm sure people got saved there. Paul ministered at every opportunity that he had. No matter what kind of snake appeared to impede or stop him, he shook them all into the fire. I'm not talking about literal snakes now. That only happened the one time that we know about. But he never failed to accomplish what God uh, wanted him to do. He eventually was martyred. He was martyred in Rome. He went to God in complete victory. He wrote to Timothy in his second letter to Timothy. He said, for I am already being poured out like a drink offering. And the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Are you one of those who longs for his appearing? 
We need to be in that state of mind, longing for the returning of our Lord. So where are we? What snakes do you need to cast into the fire? If you had a real snake on you, you'd be in a hurry to get it off of there, I'm sure. You'd be in a hurry to get it, even if it wasn't a poisonous snake. They're all creepy. So what comes against your effort to be effective in doing things for God? What comes against you? What could you say, that's, that's a snake that... You know, we all have our own snakes. We all have obstacles that the enemy uses to distract us, to detour us, to sidetrack us. And whatever he can come up with to stop us from carrying the gospel. Some will get the idea that they are not able to do that. I'm not able to carry the gospel. Shake that snake <laughs> into the fire. Shake it into the fire. I'm not able to do that. Yes, you are. Do it anyway if you don't think you can do it. God, God provides the ability. I can't sing. You don't have to tell me that. I already know. I know I can't sing. So I never even would try to sing. I wouldn't sing a note in front of anybody. I wouldn't sing in the shower even. I wouldn't sing in church just a little quietly, you know, with the hymn or something, but I would never sing in front of anybody. Then I had an opportunity to preach in a, in a church that had no pastor. They were looking for somebody to pastor this little country church. It was a... It was an AG church out in the middle of nowhere. They called it the Rock Church, I think because originally it was built on a rock and then they moved it. But the contact person said to me, we need somebody that's musical. I was in a panic. I said, I'm not musical. I can't even sing. I called the presbyter. I said, they want somebody musical. That's not me. And he just laughed and he said, God is going to stretch you. <laughs> I said, okay, I'll go down there. So we went down. There was a sound system. Nobody knew how to operate it. There was a projector. Nobody knew how to operate it. There was a piano. Nobody knew how to operate it. Nobody knew how to operate anything musical. They knew how to turn on there was a switch there that would, that would enable the microphone. So he had a microphone. That's all. So came time for the worship service and an, an older guy, probably, probably about my age now. This was a few years ago. So he came up to lead a song. And they had hymnals. And he, he opened the hymnal and led this song. And I thought, well, if he can do it, so can I. I had always been just terrified to do anything like that. So he sang this song, and I, and I turned the page, and over here was a song, Victory in Jesus. You know that song? Victory in Jesus. Anyway, so I said to the people, I said, I'm going to lead this song. That's the first song I've ever led, ever, in front of anybody. I've never sung anything. And they said, go for it. <laughs> so, I, so I did. And after that, I wasn't afraid anymore. I shook that snake of fear into the fire of the Holy Spirit. And now I don't care. <laughs> We get together communion. I usually lead a couple choruses. Then, then we went to uh, we went to minister in Tyrone. I was in a room down there for about six months before I came here, and uh, they had a, a good worship leader, and um, they had a lady that played the piano. But so when they were done with the worship part, I always sang a few courses and led them. I said, I'm going to just keep doing this. I don't care if I'm a good singer, which I'm not. I don't care. That snake was burned up in the fire of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You might think that you don't know enough to share the gospel. Are you saved? 
How did you get that way? Just share that story. Shake that snake into the fire. Feelings of being an inadequate, that's a snake. Get it off of you, shake it into the fire and be done with it. You're a child of the king. You're born again into the family of God. Satan hates you. Rise above the things the enemy puts in your path. Shake them into the fire. Whatever may be keeping you from being effective in serving God is a snake. Shake it into the fire, into the Holy Ghost fire. Shake it into the fire. Kindle a fire. Worship with emotion. Add fuel to your fire. Add fuel. To, the fuel is prayer. The enemy is never going to stand by. He's always going to try to stop you. If you have a heart for ministry, if you have a heart for the lost, he always comes up with a new snake. He always comes up with a new thing that you think can stop you, that you don't, that, where you don't think you can share the word, or you don't think you can do this or that for God. He always comes up with some feeling in, of inadequacy. Shake it off. God has given us some great promises in his word. One of the most wonderful promises in the Bible is in Isaiah 54, 17, where it says, No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Your heritage... is one of victory and power. If you look at yourself and think I'm powerless and I can't do victory, that's a snake, shake it off. Shake it in the fire. Your heritage is one that gives you the right to shake off the serpent and walk on in the Lord to accomplish what God wants you to do in your life and in lives around you. God wants you to stay the course, finish the race that is set before you, just like Paul. The attacks will come. I guarantee they'll come. But victory is yours already. Already. So if you have feelings of inadequacy, I can't do this or I can't do that or I don't. Look at Moses. He's, he tried to talk his way out of serving God and leading the people at the burning bush. He said, I, can't. He said, I don't speak well. I don't do this. I can't do that. And, um, <laughs> and God said, your brother's coming. Your brother will speak for you. He, he, God answered all of his questions. So he shook a snake off. He had to go. He said, okay, he, he did it. He did it anyway. Amen. Amen. He did, and we can do it. We need to build this church. Churches are built by personal contact, personal invitation. Invite your friends. Tell them to come on the 12th. Give them, we'll give them some shells and meatballs. <laughs> so be a, be a fearless warrior for God. Amen. Amen. Don't be afraid. Shake it off. Shake off those fears and feelings of inadequacy, feelings that you can't do it. You can do it. You can. I, yeah. Did I shake off a snake this morning? Yeah. I'll just be a man or so. <laughs> okay. He's going to play the piano.
So you knew you you thought didn't think you could do it. I didn't think I could do it. You were afraid. You were afraid to get up there. But there's nobody here but us. <laughs> It's just the way it is, and I shook a snake off. And you did. It felt great. <laughs> yeah, and it sounded great. <laughs> yeah, I've, I, I first started back at church here, and I preached the baptism of the Holy Spirit. One Sunday night, I was praying for it here, and I got home my driveway, and God, God gave me the anointing right there before I went in the house. And I, I sat here in church different times and God was saying, give, give a message to you. And I, I, I was like, well, I, I couldn't do it. And one night I was sitting there and I thought my head was going to blow off if I didn't. <laughs> and I gave the message again. Rich's dad, Dick May, Dick said to me after service, he said, God's been wanting you to do that for a long time because he's been telling me that. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, uh, and he said something to me. He said, if you're sitting there and God's telling you to do something and you don't want to do it, he said, that's the devil discouraging you. And he said, you need to put your track shoes on and go as fast as you can because if God's telling you to do it, you should do it. You know? A lot of the obstacles come out of our own mind, our own feelings. You have to rise above those feelings, shake that snake off, and just do it. Just, just do it. I remember the first time I preached a sermon. You know, I thought, well, I could do that, maybe. And I had a sermon. I had a sermon, and I carried it around in my Bible for a while. And then the pastor said, you want to preach on a Sunday night? I was a little bit panicky, but I shook that snake off, and I did it. I did it. And then there were more occasions, more opportunities. I just kept doing it. Pretty soon, after the third one, I started getting real comfortable with it and started craving for opportunities to do that. Then I thought, well, I can't, I'm not going to be a minister. I, can't, I just like to preach. This is fun. I never would stand up in front of anybody and say anything. I was always a kid in school in the back with his nose in a book. And, and, you know, I was the last one to answer questions. I was very introverted. How about her, huh? She was here. <laughs> we were together from first grade. Yeah. Shake it off. Shake it off and just do it. That's all. Just do it. Can we stand? Thanks, Bob, for shaking that snake. The only trouble is we might lose a guitar player. <laughs> Can we duplicate you? Just cut you down the middle and throw you on both sides? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Be nice to have a guitar player. I asked a lady, uh, she, lady does, I went to her from massage, and she went to a Christian Missionary Alliance Church here in Rossiola, and they, they sold it. I told her, and I said, did they sell the church? I said, and she, she can play the piano anywhere. And I said, you know, maybe if you, you want somewhere to go, we can sure you. Yeah. I don't know where she's going. She said she was going to go down to the CMA and go for a Somebody did open that church back up. Oh, yeah. yeah. As the same denomination? No. It's, somebody else bought it. And, it's one denomination. Somebody yeah. bought it. They had an ad in the paper. Somebody did buy it. There's a lot of churches going down, a lot of churches being sold. But the people of God have to step up and shake off the snakes and just do what God speaks to you in your spirit and and indicates things that you should do. And uh, a lot of things, a lot of them think, well, no, no, I can't do that. Or that's not really God talking to me. You know, I can't. He knows I can't do that. Yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can. Just do it. Shake off that snake of inadequacy. Or this, 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 whatever that snake is that's holding you back, just do it. Amen? Dear Lord, we thank you this morning for the opportunity to bring this, uh, this message to the family in the house here today and, and to worship and praise you. 
And uh, I love each person in here this morning, Lord. I ask especially your blessings on the ones that are not here because of illness. I ask you to bless Jan as your quick healing in that in that bone in her foot, Lord, and, and for Sherry, for you to rid her of the COVID and prevent her from getting it again, Lord. And um, for Dewey and Shirley, which uh, it's probably the cold weather is keeping them, just give them strength, Lord. And uh, just bless your people. We look forward to the to the day when we can all be out, out here together again and uh, without being afraid of anything. Bless us, Lord, as we go our separate ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Supposed to get one to three.